And welcome back to Hannity. Now, earlier today, the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing and dissected all the ways the administration is overreaching its constitutional authority. And here are some of the highlights. The center of gravity is shifting, and that makes it unstable. And within that system, you have the rise of an Uber presidency. Uh, there could be no greater danger for individual liberty. And I, I really think that the, the framers would be horrified by that shift, because everything they dedicated themselves to was creating this orbital balance, and we've lost it. As I've said before, I think the ultimate check is uh, elections, but uh, you know, I don't think you should be hesitant to speak the word in this room. A check on executive lawlessness is impeachment. If the people come to believe that the government is no longer constrained by the laws, then they will conclude that neither are they. That is why this is a very, very dangerous sort of thing for the, uh, the uh, president to do, to wantonly ignore the laws, uh, to try to impose obligations on people that the legislature did not approve. Joining me now, two lawmakers who were in the same room earlier today, Republican Congressman Steve King and Blake Farenthold is with us. Congressman King, um, my good friend Mark Levin uh, wrote a good book about this, and he said we're in a post-constitutional America. Can you just list for our audience the ways in which you think that this president has overstepped his constitutional authority? Well, I can in some, some of them. And for, for example, on immigration law, we call it the Morton Memos. The president has ordered ICE not to enforce clear immigration law and then made up work permits out of thin air. There are about five different violations of constitutional violations there. Under Obamacare, at some discussion today, he extended the employer mandate for a year, even though the law says shall commence in each month after December of 2013. Uh, he extended the, the individual mandate, stretched that out, and now the small package plans. He's got at least three times that he's violated the Constitution with Obamacare. He declared the Senate to not be in session to make his recess appointments when the Senate was actually in pro forma sessions and the Constitution says that the Senate shall make its own rules. That's just some of the violations that we have. It is a long list from this president, a president with no respect or little respect for the Constitution itself, Sean. All right, so you have a president that is rewriting laws to at a whim and he's not using the traditional historical checks and balances and separation of powers and and then he's rewriting laws and he's not enforcing other laws and and as you point out he just decides well I don't care whether you're in session or not uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a recess appointment congressman what do you think what are your thoughts any other areas you think of well listen the take care clause requires the president to faithfully execute all the laws it's established principle of constitutional law back from the days of Marbury versus Madison in the 1800s. The president's a constitutional law scholar. He should know this. But he's grabbing as much power as he can, and unfortunately, we're letting him do it in Congress. As one of the witnesses pointed out, this isn't a Republican or a Democrat issue. Regardless of which party is in power in the White House and in Congress, the Founding Fathers intended for Congress to have certain powers, and President Obama is taking way more than the Constitution allows, and we have got to do what we can to stop him. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of options at our disposal. Well, let's talk about the remedies, because one of the witnesses mentioned impeachment. I don't think any of us think that's going to happen. Are there any other legal remedies, the courts perhaps, uh, uh, Congressman King? Well, if we go to the courts, Sean, and we did initiate a lawsuit on the immigration issue of this a year ago last summer. Uh, we work our way through the courts of Northern District of Texas, found in our favor in the Constitution's and the people's favor at nine out of ten points, and then it got slid over into an administrative decision for ICE to appeal to. It's hard to go to the courts and get standing in the first place to be able to have your case heard and, and to be able to establish a cause of action. Then we also have the power of the purse. A Congress tried that power of the purse, and we went through government shutdown. The appetite for is almost non-existent in this Congress today, and I think the president knows it, and I think he's exploiting that. I just got the news last night that they have threatened a several hundred million dollar fine against the last company that was smelting lead for bullets in America, and now that. they're shut down. Yeah. So this list, I think the president has decided Congress can't challenge me. They can't control me. He will spend money if he decides to. He'll tax if he decides to. He'll write regulations if he decides to, and he will defy the Constitution if he decides Decides to, and we're down to that I word piece. Uh, and and, and there's really no in the appetite end, for that. It'll be the American people that have to rise up. Congressman, you know there's no appetite for that. 
Last Listen, the, the, what we've got to do, the ultimate remedy for an out-of-control president is elections. And it's not just the election of the president. It's the upcoming midterm election where we've got to take the Senate and keep control of the House to keep this out-of-control president in check. Your vote is what's going to make the difference. All right, guys, good to see you both. Pre